senses for today. And of course, in everything we do, we give it to our Lord. We should, uh, so we would like to ask everyone to please rise to glorify and ask for the guidance of the Lord for our today's seminar. We will call on Liana Roman, a member of Future Educator Society, to lead us with our opening prayer. Let us bow our heads and feel the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear God, we offer everything to you during this seminar. May we ask for your blessing and divine providence that the activities set for this undertaking be successful and effective. May we also retain the invaluable knowledge and learning experiences that we derive from this seminar for actual application when we leave this venue. May you extend your divine wisdom to our speakers so that they would be able to impart their God-given knowledge to all of us. Bless the speakers, the participants, and the committee that prepared this event so that they would be able to glean the vital information from this activity and be, be, and be blessed with your spirit. Your generous blessing would mean the success of the seminar. Grant us your divine wisdom as we go about our daily task after the seminar. This we ask in Jesus' name, Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. I am requesting everyone to please remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. So before we begin, we would like to acknowledge the presence of our supportive and beloved Dean of the College of Arts, Sciences, and Education. Let us give a round of applause for Dr. Olivia E. Almar. Good afternoon, Bob. Good afternoon. And of course, the presence of our participants from the graduate schools. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Po. All right. So once again, are you excited for today's event? Are you excited for our seminar today? Okay. Ayan. So before we begin, partner, let us have a roll call of our beautiful attendees for today. As you call our year. Make some noise and wave your hands. All right. Anjan ba ang ating mga fresh na fresh na first year students? Patingin naman po ng inyong mga kamay. First year students. Nasa mga first year students? Ayan. Magpapatalo ba ang ating mga second year students? Nasaan kayo? Ayan. And of course, ang ating mga added kuya from third year. Asan pa? Ayan. <laughs> Ayan, nasa likod. How about ang ating mga pagod na fourth year students? Sasan sila? Asan Ay, tayo? Ay, yeah. Kaya na. <laughs> Kami na lang yung natira. Ayan. Alright, so... 
Thank you for joining us today and we're sure na hindi hindi nyo pagsisisihan na umaten kayo this afternoon. Dahil talaga nga namang bigati ng mga information and knowledge ang ng ating mga resource speakers for today. Di ba partner? Alright, tama yan. So before we formally begin with our agenda for today, let us talk a short conversation. Kamusta yung muna natin sila? In our uh, class. So tala lapit tayo sa tala, tala. Dito ako partner sa kabila. Kung sino yung tumingin sa akin, siya yung tatawagin. Uy, tumingin ka, Sherwin. Kamusta ka naman, Sherwin? Goods naman. Ano naman yung ina-expect mo for today's seminar? Di ba, last week, nagkaroon din tayo. So ngayon, ano yung ina-expect mo? Um, I hope na... Uh, I hope na marami pa kami matutunan sa um, seminar na to. And lalo na yung mga first year. Ayan. Sure ako Ayan. na marami kayong matutunan. Oh, How about John Porter? Ayan, dito tayo, partner from second year. Eto, 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 magandang binibini na ito. Uh, anong pangalan mo? Great, uh, great course and year. Um, I am Erika Shane Eugenio from BS English, BS English second year po. Ayan, so anong expect mo ngayong araw? Uh, marami pong matutunan na pwede po namin i-apply sa future na para po sa pagtuturo na. Ayan, partner. 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 Uh, mga information and experience galing sa ating mga... Partner, mga mukhang may tinatawag ako dito sa kabilang Sige, side. Sige, sino ito. yan? Ayan, ma'am. Ayan. So, ano pong pangalan nila? Jillian po. Jillian? Ma'am, ngayon, same po sa tanong natin sa mga students. Ano pong ini-expect nyo ngayong araw na to? Tulad lang din po na sinabi nila na, mas, na marami kaming matutunan and ma-apply din namin in the future. <laughs> Ayan. Thank you so much, ma'am. Ayan, partner, mukhang ready-ready na ang ating mga um, participants for today. Ayan. Alright, I guess you're all ready. Are you ready to level up your teaching game, chairs? Ready na pa ang lahat? Yeah, yes, ma'am, yes. Are you ready to level up your teaching game? Again, are you ready to level up your teaching game? Alright. Ready-ready na sila, partner. Uh, before anything else? Uh, let us call our beloved Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences and Education, Dr. Olivia P. Almario, to give her opening remarks. Let us give the, uh, her a round of applause. So this hall is full of excitement. And I'm also excited to hear the stories of our educators from different countries, from New Zealand, from Japan and from the Philippines. Okay, so let me greet you in Deyu. Please greet your seatmate in Deyu. So first, I would like to thank all of you for your presence today. Napaka-importante po ng presence ninyo because this program is really prepared for you. Okay, so it is with great pleasure that I welcome you to this seminar focused on building safe and inclusive school communities where we will explore strategies and best practices from various countries to enhance our understanding and implementation of these crucial principles. Today, we gather to delve into the essence of creating environments that foster safety, inclusivity, and support for all learners. Drawing inspiration from educators across different nations, we aim to highlight the significance of PPST, domain number two, that is learning environment in shaping the educational landscape. As we embark on this journey together, let us reflect on the diverse practices from the Philippines, Japan, and New Zealand with Singaporean. Okay? Recognizing the importance of establishing positive teacher-student relationships 
promoting cultural competence, and embracing diversity to create enriching learning environments. Through collaborative efforts and shared experiences, we have the opportunity to cultivate classrooms where every student feels valued, respected, and empowered to thrive by incorporating innovative strategies and embracing the principles of PPST domain number two. We can pave the way for transformative educational experiences that transcend borders and nurture the potential of every learner. I encourage you to actively engage in today's discussions, exchange ideas, and draw inspiration from the wealth of knowledge that we will be shared. Together, let us embark on this journey of learning and discovery with a shared commitment to building safe, inclusive, and supportive school communities that laid the foundation for a brighter future. Thank you for your dedication to the noble profession of teaching and for your presence here today. I would like to make a correction. Our counterparts here are not from the graduate studies. They are from the alternative education. And most of them, I believe, are already professionals taking second, second course, CPTE. Okay? So, maraming salamat sa pag-attend ninyo at marami pang mga susunod. I hope you will also join me sa mga susunod naming activities. So, let us begin this seminar with enthusiasm and a shared vision of creating impactful educational environments. Welcome and let the journey towards building safe and inclusive school communities commence. Thank you and God bless. Hello. All right, what a start uh, to start this seminar. So uh, without further ado, I have the honor to introduce our first speaker for today. She's a dedicated early childhood educator with a passion for fostering young minds. Currently serving as the early years lead and head teacher at the International School of English in Okayama, Japan. She plays a pivotal role in shaping the educational journeys of her students. She is also a committed learner herself, pursuing her master's degree in early childhood education at La Consolation University of Philippines. Her academic pursuits reflect her deep-seated interest in various educational philosophies including play-based, cognitive-based, and Montessori approaches. Please join us in welcoming our first esteemed speaker for today. Let us give a well round of applause for Ms. Heidi Gonzalez Ubaldo. She will be joining us via Google. A pleasant afternoon to everyone. Um, I'm not so sure if I'm audible now. Okay, um, a pleasant afternoon again to everyone. Um, once again, meron lang technical problem. Okay, may I start po? Okay. Okay, so once again, a pleasant afternoon to everyone. I'm Heidi Gonzalez Ubaldo, and in a while, I'll be sharing with you some of the strategies and best practices that we do in our school in order to build a safe and inclusive school communities. 
But before we go on to that, I would like to share with you a little bit about our school and where we are actually located. So um, we are located in Okayama, the west side of Japan. And Okayama is known as the land of sunshine as throughout the year, Okayama is blessed with minimal rain and a mild climate. So we do get snow here once in a while, but not extreme like in other prefectures. Also, Okayama is one of the safest prefectures in Japan in terms of natural disasters, um, typhoons, earthquakes, and of course, um, we don't have any nuclear plants based here in our um, prefecture. Also, another fun fact about Okayama is that it is a bicycle-friendly town due to its relatively flat topography. So most of the students here, teachers, parents, we use bicycles to go to work or to wander around. So even me, actually, I go to my work every single day by bicycle. So it's very bicycle friendly, actually. So those are just some of the fun facts about our school. OK, so in this slide, as you can see, this is our school. This is the newer building. It's called Okayama International Preschool, or OIP. Um, we do have three classes in here. So in this classroom, we have our youngest class, which is the hedgehog class, or our baby class. And then on the second floor, we have two other older classes, which I will be talking about later on. We do have another older building just right next to it, which was built 24 years ago. So this is a newer one, which was built um, six years ago. Okay, so more about our school. So we have three grade levels. The first one is the zero and the two years, and we call it the hedgehog class. The second one is um, the, the koala and the squirrel classes, which is between two and the four year olds. And the third one that we have are the four and the six years, which we call the kangaroo and the fox classes. So as I mentioned just now, we have the zero to two years or the baby the baby class that we call. Um, I'll tell you more about these classes when I go on to the few um, next slides. As for the courses um, offered in our school, we have three different courses to choose from. We have the short course, which is from nine o'clock until one o'clock in the afternoon. The long course, which is from nine until three. And then the extended course, which is from nine o'clock until six o'clock. The nine o'clock to six o'clock are um, this extended course only for kids with full-time working parents. So in here, um, we need to offer afternoon snacks for the kids staying until six o'clock to give them the energy to, to, um, to go on until six or sometimes until seven o'clock in the evening. Okay, so these are the four things, strategies, and best practices that I could share with you about our school. The first one would be about health and nutrition. Second one, teaching independence through fun activities. Number three, we have the arts and creative literacy. Number four, school safety drills and exercises. Okay, let's begin with um, health and nutrition first. Um, on this slide, you can see two different sets of lunches. So we call these lunches in Japanese kyushoku. So in our school, not just actually our school, but most schools in Japan, they offer school lunches. And in our school, we prepare the school lunches in our own kitchen. And these lunches are prepared every day and they are served within a two hour time frame. Why, why does it have to be served in a two-hour two time frame? It's because this is the safest time for the food to be taken. So we don't want the food to get spoiled. Um, so soon after they're cooked, it has to be served within a two-hour time frame. So on my left here, you'll see an example of the menu with um, the writing here. It says rice, chicken. We have some cabbage, vermicelli soup, and then we have a banana here as the morning snack. So all Japanese um, lunches come in a set. So there should be rice, there should be salad, the, cor the, the uh, main dish, plus
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन Our school is surrounded by CCTV or closed circuit television to provide constant surveillance and monitoring inside the school premises. This CCTV is a valuable evidence and in investigation to help hold individuals accountable of their actions. In this slide, you can see the Brigada Escuela. Before each school year starts, the Department of Education is um, having Brigada Escuela to ensure the maintenance of the classroom, classrooms and school facility. We have here some volunteers like uh, electricians, carpenters, and painters who's the one helping us to ensure and inspect the class, the classroom facilities that the students will use throughout the school years. Together with the SPPA, the LGU, and some volunteers, the Dep Department of Education is conducting Brigada Escuela. This one is about the learner's safety and security. So this is in accordance with the Division Memorandum 415 series of 2023 in pursuant with the Republic Act 10121 or the Philippine Risk Reduction and Management of 2010. So as you can see here in the photo, we are uh, having earthquake drills. During these earthquake drills, we are training our students to do the duck cover and hold in case of uh, the occurrence of unpredictable calamities and catastrophes. Also, we are educating them on how to do, uh, on, on where to go during these times. We are also teaching them the use of the first aid kit in order to treat basic wounds and injuries during this time. During this month of March, we are celebrating the Fire Prevention Month. That is why we are educating our learners on how to properly use the fire extinguishers and to report, report incidents that might cause fire. We are also teaching them how to do the stop, roll, drop, and roll in, in case that fire catches their clothes. I, by the way, in this school, are you also having some earthquake drills? And so that is uh, in accordance with the Republic Act 101-21 of 2010. Also, during our conduct of the Boy Scout of the Philippines, we are training our students to treat basic wounds and injuries. So as you can see here in the photo, we are educating them about the different kinds of fractures and wounds that might happen to them during those unpredictable times. We are also teaching them how to uh, do the bandage in order to capacitate and to, um, in order to capacitate and to make them prepare in case these catastrophes happen so that they can uh, what so that they can help themselves and others during these calamities next slide. this one is about the learners right and protections concern the Division Memorandum 357 series of 2023 supports the strengthening of the child protection policies, which aims to discuss and address protective measures about the child abuse, violence, and other acts of abuse among women and children. In case that uh, some cases become extreme, we are seeking for the help of our higher local authorities, which are the barangay officials, the DSWD, to help us in addressing these immediate concerns. 
Um, nakakalungkot man po, pero sa nakikita po namin, uh, marami pong mga bata ang natala sa ating lungsod na nakararanas ng pangaabuso. Kaya bilang mga guru po, kailangan po um, kausapin po natin ang ating mga estudyante. Hindi lamang po yung mga bagay na tungkol sa loob ng paaralan, ngunit pati na rin po yung mga nangyayari sa kanila sa loob at labas ng paaralan sa kanilang bahay, sa kanilang mga kaibigan. So kailangan po well-informed po tayo bilang teacher nila. Hindi man po sa pag chichismisan, kundi upang tayo po ay makatulong at makatulong at ma maitigil po natin yung mga bagay na hindi dapat mangyari sa kanila. In this report, we are listing the name of the student, the case, and what happened, the date and the time and also the prevention that we did in order to address these issues. Next, please. Another campaign is about the Orange Day campaign to end the violence against women and children. In order for us to show our support, we are wearing color orange every 25th of the month. We are also uh, showing the, some videos and situations to our student, students about the, things that they, about the things that should and shouldn't happen to them as a child. Pinapanood po namin sa kanila yung mga sitwasyon kung saan uh, yung mga limitations na dapat nagagawa ng mga adults sa kanila. Medyo sensitibo po itong topic na ito, kaya kailangan po natin silang tulungan at agapayan sa pagpapanood ng mga videos na ito. In order to spread awareness that violence is not just a public health concern, but it is also a serious human, human rights crime. Spreading the awareness about the act of violence and abuse can help prevent future concerns and equip young minds of the things that they can do in order to stop and end the violence against women and children. This topic now is about the nutrition and health. The Berswain Memorial Integrated School is one of the beneficiary of the school-based feeding program of the Department of Education. In pursuance of the Division Memorandum 356, series of 2023. Next, please. This program or the school-based feeding program aims to improve nutritional status of the beneficiaries, provide nourishment, boost the immunity and enhance the over health, the overall health and well-being of our learners. So as you can see here in the photo, we have here some donations from our um, people with good hearts. So some of them donated some vitamins, soap, uh, toothbrush and toothpaste, which are es essential for the health of our learners. Ang binibigyan po namin prioridad sa mga donations ito ay yung mga batang nangangailangan. Yun pong mga makasalat at mga hindi kayang makabili ng mga gantong bagay. In order to be part of this school-based feeding program, we are calculating the body mass index of the students. We are measuring their height and their weight. So in order to calculate it, we are uh, dividing their height in, in meters and their weight in kilograms. And based on the scale here, we can categorize the BMI of the learners if they are severely wasted, wasted, normal, overweight, and obese. Usually in this program, we are prioritizing those under 
the wasted and severely wait, wasted cases. So they, so they are the beneficiaries of the program. So the total beneficiaries of this program is a total of 134 learners from kinder to grade six. So based on their BMI, that would be the basis to be included in this program, that not all of our learners are receiving this benefit. This is the meal plan and budget sample of our school-based feeding program. So we have here the enhanced Nutribun with a 20 pesos uh, budget. Included here are the storage and the transportation fees. So each student will receive this. I'm sorry, not each. The beneficiary students will receive one Nutriban each day during the program. Also, we have here the fresh milk and the calamansi juice worth 20 pesos also. The school-based feeding program is made possible with our local government partners and local businesses. The Department of Agriculture and the Department of Science and Technology. With the help of our local business partners like the Santa Maria Dairy Farm and the Cuevas Breads, we were able to deliver a nutritious and delicious meals for our learners. This one is the meal plan for our school-based feeding program. On Mondays, we are giving out the enhanced Nutribun in sweet potato variant. Next, on Tuesdays, we are giving them out extra large fresh eggs. On Wednesdays, we are giving out nutty fruity bar. And some other weeks, we are also giving away uh, fortified banana nut cookies by our local business partner, which is the Cuevas. On Thursdays, we are giving them out Nutri-Instant Meals in Champorado. It might also come with Arroscaldo flavor. So some meals, they can eat it inside our classroom. Pag wala silang baon or wala silang snack, kasi most commonly, yung mga included dito sa program na ito ay mga salat din po at walang pambaon na maibigay ang kanilang mga magulang. Kaya kinakain po nila ito sa loob ng paaralan. And some meals like the Nutri-Instant Oatmeal and the Iron Fortified Rice, they were able to uh, take it home so that they can eat it and share it with their families. These are the sample of the meals that we are giving to the beneficiaries of the school-based feeding program. On the first picture, we have the enhanced Nutribon. We have here their nutritional values and contents. Uh, we also have Nutri-flavored macaroni, banana chips, the iron-fortified rice. Also, we have here the nutty fruity bar, calamansi juice, extra-large uh, eggs and the instant nutri oatmeals. At the end of the school based feeding program, we notice the increase of weight and height among our student beneficiaries, which makes this program a successful one. Here are some of our beneficiaries. By the way, I asked for the consent of the parents in order to show these photos. So these are my students in grade one. They're, they're the ones uh, benefited from this program. And next is the 
the tree planting activity of the De Department of Education last December 2023, we were able to harvest crops that can be used inside our school canteen. So as you can see on the side of the photo, uh, there is our all-time favorite sopas and dugaw. Ayan, yung mga naitanim natin during the tree planting, uh, I think it's about the 350,000 tree planting activity last Christmas by the Department of Education. We are also teaching our young learners about the importance of the plants, about their nutrition and the things that we can make out of them. For example, we have here sandwich making contest that is uh, included our um, that included our uh, learners. Next one. Last month, February, we celebrated the National Dental Health Month. During this month, our aim is to strengthen the awareness and importance of good health, oral health hygiene, the importance of flossing, and a healthy eating and regular checkup habits. So we, alam naman natin, di ba, yung mga bata, mahihilig yan sa matatamis. Kaya naman, tinuturuan po natin sila kung paano yung tamang pagtututbrush at pagpafloss. Kasi uh, sa napansin ko po, one of the main reasons of their absenteeism is toothache, sakit, yung mga dental issues and concerns. Another program of this Department of Education is the Wash in School program. In this program, we are aiming to prevent the transmission of germs and diseases with the help of properly hand washing. So, tinuturo naman namin dito kung paano natin maiiwasan yung pagkakasakit, especially nang galing tayo sa COVID last, on the past last years. Developing these healthy habits can help prevent uh, diseases among our learners. Ayan, so mabilis lang po tayo. So I want to end uh, my discussion uh, with this message. Meeting the basic needs of a learner is crucial as it sets the stage of their long-term academic and overall or physical development. Tatandaan po natin, ang batang malusog at ligtas ay ang batang handang umunod. Yun lamang po at maraming salamat all right, thank you so much, Miss Michelle, for sharing your knowledge in making the school safe and inclusive. Tama-tama nga sinabi ni Ma'am Michelle, partner, na hindi lang tayo nagtuturo. Uh, tayo din ay nagsisilbing kanilang pangalawang magulang. And um, indeed, it's very important to prioritize our learning environment, yung safetyness and security ng ating mga students kasi malaking epekto ito sa learning or sa focus ng ating mga student. All right, so uh, I think exactly. we'll be ready so, uh, for... Okay, are we going to... Okay, sige po. All right, now let us all welcome our third speaker. She is an international school educator with over 20 years of experience working in school in the Philippines, Singapore, and New Zealand. She has a degree in psychology and education and a master's degree in early childhood education from the Philippine Normal University. In her professional career, she had an opportunities to work as a teacher and a team leader managing 21 teachers and teaching staff in the international school setting in Singapore. She moved back to the Philippines and was able to establish two Remedio Emelia inspired learning centers before moving to New Zealand before the pandemic hit. In, a, in New Zealand, she became a teacher and moved off to the role of center manager for one of the early childhood settings there. 
Her dreams of becoming a mentor eventually became a reality as she moved to the Hokkaido Institute of Technology to become an early childhood education lecturer to future ECE teachers in New Zealand. All right, let us give a well round of applause for Ms. Irene Azul. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. Nakaharang ako sa slide ko. Teka lang. Hi. Hi. Uh, ako si Irene Odilao, Odilao Azul. So, nung dalaga pa ako, ang apelido ko ay Odilao. Tapos, nakapangasawa ako ng Azul. <laughs> kaya nung nagtatrabaho ko, kaya nung nagtuturo pa ako sa Pilipinas, <laughs> hindi ako makalimutan ng mga estudyante kasi si Miss Odilaw Azul. <laughs> diba? Oh well, ganyan talaga ang life. So, I am going to talk to you about best practices for 21st century teaching and learning. Alright? So, um, sa next slide, makikita nyo, ako yung... Ang pre ang practice ko kasi naglalakad ako eh kaya Okay. So, ayan ang ating mga estudyante. As you can see, they are covered, yung faces nila are covered kasi as per as per Ma'am Michelle nga, 'di ba? You have to be as teachers, you have to be advocates for the safety and security of the children. 'Di ba? So, as much as possible, lalo pag walang consent, sa iyo may consent. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you cover the faces of the children at you do not post photos of the children, especially if they're not your children, sa social media. Okay? Ang mga estudyante ko sa baba ay yung mga estudyante ko sa New Zealand. Kasi at that point, I became a teacher, uh, a lecturer for early childhood educators. So, ang akin naman, Natuwa naman ako to have this opportunity to be with you all kasi ah, natuturuan ko nga yung mga tao sa New Zealand eh. Hindi syempre dapat kayo din, di ba? So, ah, ako yung pinaka nasa dulo, as you can see, mas malalaki pa sila. <laughs> mas, malalaki, mas malalaki pa sila sa akin. Alright? So, dati rin akong owner and directress ng Child Development Center, Reggio Emilia Inspired Child Development Center, pero it had to be closed because of the um, pandemic and then we moved to New Zealand. Okay? All right. So then, let's go ahead and have a look at when I was a student, ang nangyayari sa akin, I am not sure if it's the same with you all. Pero nung estudyante ako, I first started uh, at four, four years old. Four years old pa ba ang starting age ng school? Five na. Ah. Nung, nung bata ko, four years old ako nagsimula sa school. Tapos at four, ano ba? Four? Five. Five na! Wow! Okay. At four, uh, ang ina-expect ng teacher ko ganito, umupo ako. At ang mga kaklase ko, umupo sa upuan, tapos papakinggan lang, papakinggan ko lang si teacher. Si teacher lang ang tama. Tapos, nung medyo lumalaki ako, sasabihin ni teacher, oh, sino dito yung secretary? Di ba? Tapos, papakopyahin niya kami sa board ng lesson. And then, at the end of the week, sasabihin niya, okay, we will have a quiz. And then, at the end of the month, my monthly exam, at the end of six weeks, my, my periodical exam. Ganun yung nangyayari. Tapos, yung pinakamagagaling doon, yung mga magagaling mag-memorize. Tapos pagka, kapag natapos na ang exam, tapos na rin yung lesson, hindi mo na siya magamit. Ganun yung nangyari sa akin, ha, bilang, bilang estudyante, nung mga panahon na yun. Kaya, nung nagturo na ako sa ibang bansa, which is the next slide, <laughs> ayan ang aking face, isa akong confused. I remember... I remember standing in the middle of the room asking myself, bakit natatagpuan itong mga batang to? Ano ang nila sa school? Sinasayang nila ang tuition ng mga um, na binabayad ng mga magulang nila. Kailan sila natututo? When is learning taking place? 
Kasi naglalaulang sila. May mga batang nagbabasaan lang doon. May mga batang gusto lang matulog. May mga batang gusto lang magba. Diba? Kailan, kailan natututo yung mga bata dito? Bakit minsan hindi sila nak- nak- nakikinig sa teacher? Tapos okay lang sa teacher, yung teacher hindi nagagalit. As you can see in the next slide, makikita niyo rin what the other children want to do. They want to play with Lego. They want to play um, racing games. Tapos okay lang. So parang ako, teka muna, am I missing something here? Parang ako yung, di ba, kasi as teachers, we have to be reflective. May isip mo, ako ba yung may mali? Teka lang, kailangan ko yatang mag-aral ulit. So ang ginawa ko, inaral ko yung play-based curriculum and approaches. So papasadahan natin yun, pero hindi lahat, kasi marami yun. So, papasadahan natin yung tatlo sa play-based curriculum learning and approaches. And we'll have a look at the three principles. Tapos, jump tayo sa best practices. Okay? So, let's start with... Ah! Bago yan. May tanong ako sa inyo. Dahil naging dilema ko to, itatanong ko rin sa inyo. Maglaro tayo. Sabihin niyo sa akin, sa bawat photo, itong mga batang to ba ay... Natututo o naglalaro lang? Tignan natin ang unang slide. Betsy, by golly, let's go. All right. Ah, ang photos na to ay galing sa um, mga estudyante ko na nasa New Zealand, sa Hamilton, New Zealand. Ang mga batang nagsiswing, natututo ba sila o naglalaro lang? Learning or just playing? Ah, sige nga. Sabihin natin, bakit mo nasabing learning? Um, uh, based po sa napag-aralan namin since um, I'm uh, taking early child education po. Uh, sa so nakikita ko po, uh, learning po sila. Uh, learning through playing since they are enhancing their sensory motor skills, especially po the gross and fine motor skills. Anong pala? <laughs> Misty po. Misty. Palakpaka naman natin si Misty. Wow. Well done. Nakikita nyo na natututo yung mga bata. Kasi yung mga bata, they learn best when they are moving. So hindi pwede na. Diyan ka lang stand in the corner Think about what you're doing. Kasi anong gagawin ng bata pag nag-stand in the corner yan? Sample lang ko kayo. Ito ang gagawin niya. Diba? So, stand sa corner pero hindi niya kayang to stand there and keep still. Kasi yung body niya needs to move to learn. Sa palagay niyo ba, sinusunod niya yung teacher sa pagsabing Isipin mo kung ano yung ginawa mo. Hindi. Kailangan mo to talk him or her through it. Yun sa sitwasyon. Okay, tingnan natin yung next slide. Naglalaro? O natutulo? Natututo? Ay, nakita nyo? Extra pa ako sa anong yan, sa photo na yan. Nakita nyo? Andun ako sa corner. <laughs> okay. Malamig kasi yan. <laughs> kasi mga... Siguro mga fall yan, fall. Kaya maraming uh, leaves makalat pag fall. <laughs> Kasi maraming falling leaves at kailangan mo siya as a teacher walisin for safety and security. Okay? Natututo ang naglalaro ang mga batang nagbabike. Paano? Po, natututo po sila kasi po na-enhance po nila yung motor skill po nila. Alright. Thank you. Motor skills. Yes, motor skills enhancement. But not only that. Pag ang mga bata, gusto nilang mag-bike, kasabihin na, bike, 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 bike. Gusto ko rin yung bike mo. Kahit na may bike doon na pareho, 
yung bike na ginagamit ng batang yun ang gusto ko. Yan on. So, then you talk about taking turns, sharing, which is, ano, magkaibang concept yun, ha? Sharing and taking turns. And you talk about how to, how to ask. What words to use? Kasi kailangan ko matandaan na yung mga batang to ay three to four years pa lang na nabubuhay sa mundo, they might not have that vocabulary. So you have to provide it to them. Kasi once you provide it to them, then they will be able to access that learning and use it sa ibang sitwasyon. Di ba? Okay. Sa so mga next slide din, Nagpe-play do. Nagpe-play do. O sige, alam na natin na natututo kasi nasa classroom naman sila. Ano ang natututunan ng mga bata na nagpe-play do? Ano po, nai-enhance po yung fine motor skills ng mga bata. Um, nananas yung mga balahibo ko kasi kung ako noong panahon na estudyante ako, hindi ko alam tong mga to. So, I can see, I can clearly see na kayo mas improve na yung learning ng um, ng bachelor's na mga uh, sa education. Ang galing! Kung baga, ano kayo um, updated. So, uh, the more senses are involved in the learning process, mas natututo ang mga bata. Kapag kayo nakikinig dyan, anong, nakik anong senses ang gamit nyo? Ano lang? Hearing at ano pa? Oh, nakikita nyo ako, nagsasayo, di ba? Oh. <laughs> so, sight and, sight and hearing lang. Pag kayo, adults, I expect you to be able to do that. Di ba? Pero pag children, you cannot expect them to do that because they learn through movement. So, kapag naglalaro sila ng Play-Doh, ano ang senses na gamit nila? Nice! Touch! Ano pa? Sight? Ano pa? Ha? Huh? Touch? Sight? Ano pa? Smell! Yes! Interesting! Smell! Kasi minsan, yung mga Play-Doh, lalagyan mo siya ng lemon scent, chocolate scent, vanilla, vanilla scent. Um, yung ibang teachers sa US, nilalagyan nila ng Kool-Aid. <laughs> yung Play-Doh. Para, kasi yung Kool-Aid, ang lakas ng pangamoy, ang lakas ng amoy. So, yung cherry na Kool-Aid, ang bango. Kaya lang, usually, pati yung sense of taste na gagamit. Siyempre, we discourage that, lalo na ng pandemic. Naku po, ang hirap-hirap nun. <laughs> May mga batang sabi ng huwag kainan ng play do <laughs> Sa English yun, siyempre, di ba? Tapos, um, uh, next slide. Ah, minsan yung mga bata, lalo na sa New Zealand. Ang mga bata sa New Zealand, ah, hindi lang bata actually, pati yung matatanda. They love... Um, they love the outdoors. It's usually mga nakapaa sila. Earthing ang tawag doon. Seeing earthing, yun yung they connect themselves to the ground. They have a lot of respect for the land. So gusto nila lagi silang connected sa ground. Kaya minsan, kahit nasa mall sila, nakapaa sila. Eh, which is, that's alright. That's their culture. Diba? Siyempre, sa atin lang is ano. Naglalaro o natututo? Paano? Uh, I think they are learning by interacting with uh, the environment, with the trees, with the ground, with the grass, with the insects. Nice. They learn by, uh, they learn how the world works kasi they interact and engage with the world around them. Papa, pain. Natututo pa rin, di ba? Yes. Paano? Last na to, last na to. Um, natututo po sila by simply using their mental 
mental images on their mind to create something for them to paint to yeah, paint yeah. something yun so sige. yeah okay <laughs> salamat so cognitive di ba hindi lang yun pag nagpe-paint sila tapos santa makmak na yung paint dun sa water ay dun sa paper ano mangyayari sa papel it will it will be soaking wet tapos makikita nila yung changes that it that will happen if this takes place so makukuha din nila yon as um, a learning experience okay so tingnan natin yung um, early childhood approaches and curriculum tatlo lang to tatlo lang to let's start with doctor i know with loris malaguzzi Sino si Loris Malaguzzi? Kilala ko siya. Hands up. Hindi ko siya kilala. Hands up. Hindi ko siya kilala. Sino hindi nakakilala? Okay. It's fine. Si Loris Malaguzzi ang ang founder ng Reggio Emilia Approach. So essentially, ang Reggio Emilia Approach, ang principle niya is the image of the child, environment as the third teacher, ganoon. Among many others, ha? Huh? Sabi ni Loris Malaguzzi, your image, ito, importante to, your image of the child, anong nakalagay sa slide ko? Hindi ko siya memoryado. Is where teaching begins. Kung ano, ang tingin mo sa learner mo, ganun ka mag -e engage sa kanya. Parang pag ang tingin ng teacher sa learner niya ay walang alam. Paano niya tuturuan ang batang yun? Lagi, niyang mag, lagi siyang magpo-provide ng information. Tapos minsan, alam niyo, kailangan niyo maintindihan. Well, alam niyo naman to, Pihado. We are not always a hundred percent. Diba? At pag nasa classroom ka nang meron kang ibang iniisip, and all you see is, ay, ito na naman mga walang alaman tuturuan ko. That will affect how you engage with the students. Pero, pag ang estudyante, ay pag ang teacher, ang tingin niya sa estudyante, eto, mm, loko-loko to eh, pero may potential to eh. Iba ang way ng engagement ng teacher na yun sa mga estudyante niya. ba? Kasi alam niya, I am here to help bring out that potential. Nagigets niyo ba? Am I making sense? Woo! Alright. Merong three teachers sa mga bata. Hindi lang ikaw. Teachers, other children, tsaka yung physical environment. So, kailangan, pagpasok pa lang ng mga estudyante mo sa classroom niya, ay sa classroom mo, may natututunan na siya. And I am not talking about, ah, ito yung mga pambansang bayani. Ah, ito yung mga primary colors na nasa wall. Hindi yun. I am talking about order. Kailangan, pagpasok ng mga bata sa classroom, alam na niya, ah, Doon pala dapat nakalagay ang mga libro. Ah, dito yung mga notebook. Alam niya na may certain sense of order ang classroom niyo. Kasi matutut um, isa yun sa mga bagay na inaabsorb nila pagpasok pa lang nila sa classroom niyo. ba? Alam niya yung mga blocks. Hmm. Nakapasok na ba sa kayo sa isang classroom na ang mga letters ay... Random? Hindi, di ba? Bakit? Bakit hindi random ang letters? Kasi simula pa lang, pagpasok pa lang nila, nakikita na nila yung arrangement ng letters na yun. Yung order, yung sequence. Yes? Make sense? Okay. Tapos, isa rin to sa mga sinasabi ni Loris Malaguzzi, it is important for the teacher who works with young children to understand that he or she knows little about children. You have to acknowledge that as teachers, 
hindi lang ikaw yung expert sa classroom na yun. You are a teacher and a researcher alongside the children. Di ba? Para uh, yung dynamic ng classroom, alam mong natututo ka alongside din. So pag may hindi ka alam na tinanong ng estudyante, alam mong open sila sa sagot mong, I don't know, but we can find out together. Diba? Tsaka mawala yung pride. Mawala yung pride sa'yo. Diba? Okay. And sa next one, sinong nakakakilala dito? Yes. Yan si Dr. Maria Montessori. Sa Montessori approach naman, it's very important uh, na yung whatever the hand does, the mind remembers. So it involves a lot of Tulad nga ng sinabi ko kanina, multisensorial experience. Okay? Experience using the senses. Okay? Si Maria Montessori din, proponent siya na, as teachers, we need to know the children. How do you know the children? You observe them. Know where they are coming from so you know how to help them and where to help them. Yeah? Does that make sense? Okay. At the end of the day, ang success ng teacher ay, tada! Yes. Sabi ni Maria Montessori, the greatest sign of a success for a teacher is to be able to say the children are now working as if I did not exist. Do you remember that time when sabi ko, nakatayo ako sa middle of the class? Tapos hindi ko maintindihan kung anong nangyayari. Kapag naiintindihan mo na how play-based learning works, you learn what organized chaos looks like. So tatayo ka in the middle of the class. May mga batang nagbabasaan doon, masasaya sila. May mga batang uh, nag nag-uusap ng Chinese at mukha silang mga nag-aaway doon, pero kaya nilang i-resolve yung issues nila. May mga bata sa loob na nagpe-painting kasama ng teaching assistant. May mga bata sa loob na nagbabasa. At hindi ka na maguguluhan sa itsura ng classroom mo. Kasi alam mo na alam nila yung rules and expectations sa classroom mo. And that's your sign of success. The only thing left for you to do is to write observations for your report, take photos, and find out what's the next move for each of these children. Okay? Next, Tefariki. Ang Tefariki, masyado ba ako mabilis? Okay lang ako? Okay. Kasi isa yun sa mga feedback sa akin ng... <laughs> Sa Hamilton, masyado daw akong mabilis magsalita. Sabihan niyo ako ah, okay lang ako, naiintindihan niyo pa ako. All right. So, sa next slide, nandun dun yung tefariki. Tefariki is a Maori term that means the woven mat. The woven mat. So, ano siya? Sabi ko sa inyo, practice ko, dalawang kamay ng... Dalawang kamay ang umano sa akin yan. Ganyan. So, intertwined, intertwined ang learning strands, which are the gray areas. Hindi masyadong makita, but the learning strands are the um, well-being, belonging, communication, contribution, and exploration. These are the things that the, the learning strands that the children will go through. And it ties in with the principles of empowerment. So the children have to be empowered. Their families and communities need to be involved. The importance of relationships and the importance of holistic development. Intertwined siya together to, to get the vision of the children. Kasi ang tefariki is a very inclusive curriculum. 
It is a curriculum for all. So regardless if your child is neurodiverse or have learning difficulties, ang Tifariki still applies to them. So this is for children five below. Yeah, five years old and below. At ang goal, ang pinaka-goal nila is nasa next slide, which is for children to be healthy in mind and body, just like sa Pilipinas din, di ba? Gusto nila initially, ang mga bata healthy in mind and body, able to communicate their wants and needs, uh, confident in doing that, they belong to their classroom, they belong to, to their communities, and they can contribute to their communities. Ang Tepariki ay available online. So you can have a read. It will be in English and in Maori na version. Okay? Alright. So, knowing all that, you can see na ang common theme sa kanila is experiential learning, which is learning through play. Okay? So then, once we know all this, we'll find out, okay, ah, sino ba dito yung gustong magtrabaho sa ibang bansa? Sino yung gustong mag, magturo sa ibang bansa? Ay, hindi ba pwedeng tanong yun? Personal, personal question ba yun? Sino yung, oh, ganito lang. <laughs> sino yung parang gusto nila, sino ang May mga kakilalang nagti-teacher na sa ibang bansa. Ah, okay. Sino yung gustong magtrabaho sa ibang bansa? Oh, agent ako eh. Achos, hindi naman eh. <laughs> hindi kaya. <laughs> agent pala eh. Ito nga play card ko. Oh. <laughs> hindi. Okay. Consider yung 21, yung next slides natin, consider that as your basis. ba? So sa next slide natin, makikita natin yung best practices for 21st century teaching and learning. As you can see, ang pinili ko talaga is unfinished puzzle. So apat lang yan, pero do not limit yourselves to four best practices. Kasi, Kasi, <laughs> kasi um, your practice develops as you grow and mature in your career. So, I encourage you to attend lots of PDs, to read up and engage in research. Kasi, yung maya, mga yan ang makakatulong sa inyo sa practice nyo. Ang research, maswerte nga kayo, kasi ang research is readily available online. Tapos maraming PDs, pag nag-sign up kayo, kasi medyo ano ako, medyo PD nerd ako sa mga ganito. <laughs> Gustong gusto ko yung mga PD ng research ng mga iba-ibang na universally. Sa US, madami. Uh, kesa Facebook, kayo ng Facebook. <laughs> Mag- <laughs> Walang judgment, sige na nga. Uh, <laughs> um, you look up people who are researchers, who are open to um, uh, to sharing their knowledge on Facebook with you. Kasi, sinishare din nila, oh, merong PD for the week and it will be free while it's live. Naka, Nakakaano na ba kayo ng mga ganon? Yung mga fairy dust teaching, sila Teacher Tom. Sila, si Teacher Tom, sobrang galing nun. Um, yung mga neuroscientists, they open their research to the public. ba? For, for you, for you teachers. Okay? So let's start with develop relationships. Relationships, ba? Tatlo yan. As a teacher, you develop relationships with the children, with the other teachers, and with the families. Okay? Bakit importante yun? Kasi, imagine ninyo ang bata. Ah, ganito. Imagine ninyo ang bata, four years old. Kakalipat niya lang ng New Zealand. Pilipino siya. Tagalog ang salita niya. 
sasabihin ng mami niya, o anak, iwan na kita ha, wala ka na dyan, papasok na ako. Ang batang yon first time niyang magsuschool sa New Zealand, na-imagine nyo, kasama nyo, kasama ko kayo sa imagination ko, hey, first time niyang magsuschool, sakikita niya, ha? May mga batang nagbabasaan doon. Ayoko mabasa. Hay, hindi ko maintindihan mag-English yung mga bata doon. Yung teacher ko, hindi ko maintindihan magsalita. Sa palagay niyo ba, tuwang-tuwa siya kasi iwan na siya ng mami niya? Hindi. Anong nararamdaman niya? Natatakot siya. Natatakot siya. Kailangan, ikaw ang first point of call niya, alam mo, na kailangan niya ng relationship. And based on a study by Cliff and Solvason, sinab, minention niya dyan, nila dyan yung attachment theory. Yung attachment theory, ang ibig sabihin lang nun, yung mga bata, maghahanap yan ng, uh, so may innate drive sila to form attachments. So maghahanap yan ng caregivers, maghahanap yan ng makaka-relationship nila sa environment. So as a teacher, as an adult, alam niya, alam mo yun. So alam mo na eventually, yung new child na yan, makakaform yan ng relationship uh, um, either with you or with other children or with the teacher, with other teachers. Kasi halimbawa, takot, takot yung four-year-old. Tapos maririnig niyang magandang o oh Ano siya sabi niya? Hala, may Pilipino. Naintindihan ko siya. So, hindi man siya sa'yo makukonek. Ma makukonek siya dun sa staff mo. So, you have to have a good relationship with the staff as well. Yeah? Okay. Uh, ano pa? Ah, sa attachment theory, apat na S ang gusto niya. Sabi niya, children need to feel seen, Soothe, secure, and safe. Parang yun sa'yo din. Miss Michelle, di ba? No? Ang galing. <laughs> Pag ang batang tiyak, tapos sinabi mo bilang teacher, yaan mo yan. Titigil din yan. Ang bata ba will feel seen? No, hindi. So bilang teacher, Minsan, sa totoo lang, bilang teacher, meron mga bata na six months na hindi pa siya makasettle. Parang ikaw, na napapanaginipa mo na yung, ano, yung iyak niya. <laughs> alam na, alam mo na yung iyak niya, napapanaginipa mo na. Pero, alam mo that eventually, they will form attachments. So, you have to be there, you have to be the adult and be patient with that. Okay? So, next. Develop consistent routines. Ah, ganito. Nung kayo, kayo pag umaga, meron kayong routine. Tama ba ako? Ano ang unang ginagawa nyo pagka gising? Nagsisend po? Ay, grabe. <laughs> Hindi ako din naman eh. <laughs> ano ang unang ginagawa pagka gising? Pagka gising, kailangan magilamos. Kum <laughs> diba? Uh, kumain, maligo, magbihes, kailangan bago mag-7 o'clock, makaalis na ako, kundi traffic. ba? Diba? Yung mga bata, ganun din. You have to provide them with consistent routine. Bakit? Kasi, kasama yon sa feeling of safety and security. Pag alam nila, pag predictable, alam nila kung ano yung susunod na mangyayari. Alam nila na, Pagka-arrive nila sa school, maglalaro sila. Makikita nila sa kitchen, lalatala na nung cook yung pagkain. Morning tea na. Di uupo na sila para mag-morning tea. Tapos laro na ulit. Pagdating ulit ng cook, may pagkain ulit. Lunch na. Pagtapos sa New Zealand, ganito ang nangyayari. Pag lunch, pagtapos ng lunch, Nap time na. ba? Diba? May nap time kasi. Pagda, pagkatapos ng nap time, pagkagising nila, 
maglalaro lang sila ng konti, pick up na. Andiyan na ulit si mami. At araw-araw na nangyayari yun. So next time, ano na nila? So they will feel safe and secure because they know what's going to happen next. Diba? Patterns. Patterns. Diba? Sa buhay natin, pag yung mga patterns, importante yan. Okay. Develop consistent routines. I have a, uh, a short video, six minutes long to, pero gusto ko lang ipakita sa inyo. Uh, video to, galing sa aking uh, American International School. And I will, I will point out na these are two to three year old children. I want you to see kung ano expectations nyo of a two to three year old versus sa nakikita nyo dito. Ano yung feelings nyo about it? Uh, siguro mga two minutes, tignan natin. All right. <laughs> As you can see, uh, anyways, yung nakikita nyo ako yan. Tapos nakikita nyo may lunch duty list. Nakikita nyo yung lunch duty list. Sa lunch duty list, nakalagay doon, lunch duty. Tapos, merong name cards. Yung name cards, so I, I am pointing these out to you because these are intentional learning experiences. Yeah? That you can, that you can do for your classroom. So yung name cards, may pangalan nila. Always use, uh, ano ba yung font na cute? Comic Sans, Yes. Kasi ang Comic Sans, yung letter G, tsaka yung letter A, ganun ka magsulat ng letter G at letter A na printed. Okay? Kaya yun yung gagamitin. So may pangalan niya, may photo niya. That is for, bakit ako naglalagay ng ganun? Bakit may name card? Para saan yun? Hindi naman nila yung mababasa. Bakit may ganun? Sige, 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 sige. Okay. Kaya po meron pong pictures and names para po ma-associate po nila yung routine po. I mean, para maging consistent po yung daily things nila every time na magla-lunch nila. Ah, for consistency. Ano pang nangyayari pag nakikita nila yung yung pattern? ng pangalan nila sa photo nila? Uh, nagiging familiar po sila. Yes! Nagiging familiar sila dun sa letters nung mga pangalan nila. Kasi sa totoo lang, pag ang pangalan niya ay Emily, wala siyang pakialam sa letter A. ba? Diba? Kaya mahirap yung letter of the week. Ngayon, letter A tayo. Mahirap din kasi hmm, sana wala akong na nasasagasaan dito. Pero, um, kasi, ang pakialam niya lang, yung pangalan niya. Eh kung paano ang pangalan niya, Lee? Ano ba? Pero, there are ways to help them connect. 
Kasi pwede mo sabihin, Oh, your friend Abigail's name has an A. Yan o. Para makonek mo. Kasi eventually, napapuputa ka rin sa A, di ba? Alright. Tapos, uh, ito, I want to also point out na itong routine na to did not start out like this. Hindi yung pagpasok nila, marunong na agad sila niyan. Hindi. Nagsimula kami sa ang mga batang to ay pag nakita nilang may pagkain, alam lang nila, kainan na. Ganon. So, we have to tell them, oh, you've got to wash your hands and then sit at the chair. Ganon. Kasi maamoy nila yun eh. Maamoy na, oh, patutin na yung pagkain. Tapos, eventually, because they got so used to the routine, you as a teacher will know when to start adding. You as a teacher will know when to start adding these routines to make them more helpful and responsible. Itong mga batang to, at this age, the younger they are, the more willing they want to help. So you take advantage of that. Sila, sila gusto, but, to think about the spoons. Ganon. Kaya kailangan mo rin ipantin, in, ipaintindi na meron tayong naka-assign ngayon sa spoons, meron tayong naka-assign ngayon sa forks. Pati yung mga spoons and forks, may labels din yun. And my photos. It's all for the children to learn. Hey, pwede po ba nating um, ilagay dito? Uh, ako, sorry ah. <laughs> Towards the end, ang ginagawa ko dyan is to, because I have children of different nationalities, I have Japanese children, so what we do is, Put your hands together and we say, Itadakimas. You hold your friend's hands and you say, We love our bread. We love our butter. But most of all, we love each other. Tapos tuwan-tuwa sila. Yay! Magpapalakpakan sila. So alam nila ang <laughs> time to eat na. And remember, these are two to three-year-old children and they can do it. Ibig sabihin, kaya. Kaya. Diba? Ang gagaling kaya. Ang routine, sorry, ako na diba talaga yung umano? <laughs> Ang routine are also there for your, safe, for your children's safety. Uh, sa ibang bansa, ang play ay indoor and outdoor, ideally, at indoor and outdoor, uh, simultaneously. May nangyayaring play sa labas at sa loob. Pag ang bata nasa loob yan, at nakita niya ang naspot niya ang bike sa labas, hindi niya makaganto lang siya, parang siyang kabayo. So he or she will run to the bike without any regard sa mga naka, nakakalat na sapatos o laruan. So you always have yung developing consistent routine will also help out for the room to be safe. And also, yun nga, tulad ng sinabi ko, para predictable. Para alam nila yung susunod na mangyayari. Okay? And then, sa next slide, we'll talk about Dalawa na lang po. <laughs> we'll talk about providing first-hand experience. Importante that you provide children with first-hand experience in your classroom kasi experiential learning nga yung gusto nila. Gusto nila to learn through play. Diba? Minsan, ang mga batang to, hindi sila pwedeng maglaro ng flower sa bahay nila. Makalat kaya yun. Diba? Hindi sila pwede maglaro nun. Hindi sila pwede maglaro ng tubig. Hindi sila pwede maglaro ng mud. Nasasabihin ng mga, ng mga magulang, dirty! Dirty yan! Diba? Pero sa school, you have to be able to provide that. Diba? May mga bata, pag makita mo sa next slide, may mga bata na uh, they will dive right in 
Uy, ano yan? Flour. Tapos, alagay-lagay nila sa mga mukha nila, sa mga damit nila. Tuwang-tuwa sila sa changes brought about by that. Tapos, alagay nila kay classmate. Ayaw niya. Ayaw ni classmate ng flour. Kasi my children who are slow to warm up, ay, gusto nila, observe, observe muna sila. Kasi yun yung safety net nila. Observe muna sila. Kapag medyo tatlong araw nang nandiyan dyan yung flour, unti-unti na yan. Sa susunod, sila na yung nagkakalat ng flour. Kasi you gave them that time. Tapos yung flour, samahan mo ng water. Pag yung flour at water magkasama, anong mangyayari? Magigis ang gloop ang tawag doon, gloop. Lalagkit. So, ibang experience na naman yun. ba? Diba? Pero, these are experiences that they can share with their classmates. Ganun ang itsura ng play-based learning. At kailangan maintindihan na hindi lahat ng estudyante nandu doon all at the same time, ha? Kasi, there will be like three or four over there, but the rest will be in other areas. So it's it's gonna be up to you how and when. It's a skill. It's a skill to know when to jump from one learning experience to another. Diba? And when to scaffold, which is gonna be our next which is gonna be our next one. Ah, so halimbawa, the mga bata when they are playing outside, then they will climb up the slides. Sa Sa New Zealand at sa Singapore, may mga teachers who are not very keen to let the children do this. Ang sasabihin nila, this is not safe. Pero ako, I would rather have them take that risk because it's also an experiential learning. Biruin mo, at two to three, nararamdaman na nila kung anong ibig sabihin ng gravity. So pag high school nila, naiintindihan na nila kung ano yung gravity. Kasi na-experience na nila yun nung naglalaro sila eh. So that's the importance of experiential learning. It will be embedded. Embedded sa, sa mga um, utak nila. In sa next slide, ah, may mga curriculum na May mga international schools that they let you um, in on the curriculum that they have. Let's say, uh, ito is on the creative curriculum. Creative curriculum ang tawag dito. And on the fourth unit, it asks you to discuss on movement. So, kung alam mo na ang unit 4 mo ay movement, unit 1 pa lang, inaalaw mo na sila to move on their own. May dance party ka dyan, di ba? May running races ka dyan. You let them move on their own. Para pagdating mo ng unit 4, hindi ka doon palang nag introduce ng movement. Level up na ang movement. Movement using tools na ang ginagamit. And again, it's experiential learning. So magsiset up ka ng puli sa classroom. Magsiset up ka ng inclined plane, ng slides, and you let them do the work. Kasi yung bodies nila need to be able to experience that. Tapos sa next slide, the fourth one is scaffold. Ano ang sabihin ng scaffold? Support. Yes, support. Tama po, support. Sino nang nakarinig ng scaffolding theory? Hi, lagot sa teacher. Lagot sa teacher. Hindi alam, lagot sa teacher. <laughs> Sino nang nakarinig na ng scaffolding theory? Wut, wut. Sige nga, tignan nga natin. Dito tayo sa bandang likuran. Scaffolding theory is what? Oh. 
uh, by Lev Vygotsky, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's about uh, guiding the learner until they learn themselves. Ano po, for me, yung scaffolding po is kay Lev Vygotsky and yung yung nasa gitna po and ito po yung scaff tapos yung nasa bottom po is yung nasa bottom po is yun, yun na po yung parang alam na po ng bata then yung sa taas yung hindi pa po alam ng bata so yung sa taas po yung ituturo nyo yung hindi po alam ng bata hindi na pala ako kailangan dito eh walk out na ako <laughs> Sa next slide, ang galing, ang galing ng mga, ng mga tagal ako. Natutuwa naman ako sa inyo. Ayan. So, uh, pasensya na sa slide na yan. Ako lang talaga ang gumawa nyo, eh, di ba? <laughs> so, kung ang mga bata, ito, ito yun, di ba? The zone of proximal development. Ang mga bata, para maging independent sila, may, may mga bagay sila na kayang gawin may mga bagay mga bagay sila na kayang gawin with help and eventually at yun yung zone of proximal development and eventually they will be able to do this by themselves di ba zone of proximal development din nasa gitna okay scaffold sa classroom ko paano ko ginawa yung scaffold May dalawa akong example. Yung unang example ko, ito. Nasa next slide. Sa next slide, makikita nyo, if you're an international school teacher, you will, or even if you're just, you're a teacher everywhere, di ba? You are given a calendar, a school calendar. Tama ba ako? Yes. Sa school calendar, it will show you what's gonna happen from the first to the last day of school. So sa akin, on the, pagkakita ko ng school calendar, hey, two to three, may swimming. May swimming class. Unang-una sa lahat. Si Miss Irene ay hindi marunong mag-swimming. <laughs> o paano ako magtuturo ng swimming class, di ba? Um, and I have, I was comforted to know that there is a swimming instructor. So, hindi ako. So, part lang ako ng saya. <laughs> so, ang nangyari ay, what I did was, dahil ay, bilang teacher, alam mo na ang mga bata, may mga bata na takot sa tubig. Ayaw nilang matubigan ang kanilang mga mukha. So, dahil alam mo na may swim class towards the end of the unit, Unit 1 pa lang, i-introduce mo na sila sa water play. Maglalagay ka ng tub of water. By Unit 3, you do a splash day. Every week, they come in their swim clothes and you splash water at each other at the designated splash day um, spot. Kaso, yung mga estudyante ko, sobrang natuwa sa splash day. At kung makikita mo sa next slide, sa next slide, sila ang mga naka-uniform at kahit hindi splash day, splash day pa rin ang gusto nilang gawin. <laughs> well, masaya naman sila, di ba? So, that's the most important thing. And then, towards the time of the... Swimming class, tignan niyo naman ang confidence level ng mga estudyante ko by that time. Ha! Diba? Nakaka-proud naman talaga. So, hindi mo na sila kailangang i-orient na it's okay for, your, for water to splash on your face. Si ready-ready na sila eh. Ready, ready na sila sa experience. Okay lang ako, one last, one last example. Are you alright? Okay. Towards the end of the unit, nakalagay din. Sa school calendar. Class photo. 
ang class photo, isa yan sa mga dinidread ng mga teachers. Kasi, unang-una, ang mga 2 to 3-year-old mo ay pupunta sa ibang classroom na hindi sila familiar. Ang bata, pag pupunta sa ibang classroom, takot yan, anxious yan. Tapos, yung classroom na yun is set up differently. Meron siyang papel sa wall na kulay puti, parang tarp. May malalaking camera. May mga tao na hindi nila kilala. So, ang ginawa ko, I, I put the experience in the classroom. Nagkaroon ako ng corner, ng photo, photo corner, para mag-practice. Ang ginawa ko, nag-blue lang ako ng paper. As you can see, probably on the next slide. Nag-blue lang ako ng paper <laughs> sa wall. Tapos sabi ko sa mga bata, Stand and pose! Stand and pose! Siyempre, kailangan silly. Kasi pag ganun ka bata eh, gusto nila yung lagi kang nakakatawa. So, yung mga bata, stand and pose din sila. Stand and pose din silang ganun doon sa... Tapos pinipicture-picture na namin sila. So eventually, when class photo day came, <laughs> Ayan! Napaka... Nakakatuwa talaga. Ayan, last to know yung ko. ko. <laughs> Nakakatuwa talaga kasi walang umiiyak. Alam na alam nila, stand and pose. So, um, ready, ready sila. Yun. So, um, add on to the best practices which are, ano nga ba yung apat na best practices natin? Re develop relationships, consistent routine, first-hand experience, tsaka scaffold. Okay, so, yun lang ako ngayon, uh, and teachers. <laughs> Maraming salamat sa inyo, and ito ang challenge. Ito ang challenge ko sa inyo. Make the world your playground. Salamat. Alright. Thank you so much, Miss Irene. Uh, for sharing us your knowledge, your experience, and also your positive energy. Truly, uh, knowing these approaches are very helpful in our teaching journey as educators. And this is also anchored no, uh, in the principle that says, you are not the sage on the stage, but also, uh, but you are a guide on the side. Yes. So, yes, partner? Ayan, so nakakatuwa si Ma'am, madami siyang energy. Ganun, ganun, pag ganun talaga pag-ECE teacher. 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 Tama pa, ECE teachers dyan, mga future educators. Ayan, nakaka-relate yung mga ECE nakaka uh, mga educators ECE. natin dyan. Ayan, so, okay, so now, before we introduce our last speaker for today, let us first, uh, let us have an information number. Uh, it is one of the member of the Future Educator Society. Let us give a well round of applause for Mr. Rigel Lopez. Ayun. Magbibigay lang siya ng music sa likod. Ayun. Ano to, partner? Sumasali daw to ng, ano, ng singing contest. Hakot award ba? Oo. Hakot award daw to. Ayan. So, hinga-hinga po muna tayo. Hinga-hinga po muna tayo. Stretch, stretch. Well, kung pwede po tayo po tayong lahat. Ayan. Stand and pose. Ayan. Stand and pose daw. Okay, everyone, let us all stand. Stand. Ayan, tayo po tayong lahat. One, two, three. Stand and pose. 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 Ayan. So, ready-ready na po ang ating song wrist. Song wrist. Ayan, si Rigel. Thank you so, thank you so much, thank everyone. You, thank you so much, ma'am. Georgia. Palakpakan po natin si Rigel Lopez.
Halos lahat ay nagtatanong doon sa aming bayan. Sagit ng kanluran na aking pinagmulan. Sila'y nalilito, ba't daw ako nagkaganito? Kung ano ang dahilan, ako lang ang nakakaalam. Magulang ko'y ginawa na ang lahat na paraan. Upang mahiwalay sa aking natutunan, subalit iniwan ko ang ibinigay na karangyaan. Kung ano ang dahilan, ako lang ang nakakaalam. Musika ang buhay na aking tinataglay. Ito rin ang dahilan kung ba't ako naglalakbay. Musika ang buhay na aking tinataglay. Ito rin ang dahilan kung ba't ako Naglalapay Kaya ngayon ako'y narito upang ipaalam Na di ako nagkamali sa aking daan Gantin pala'y di ko hangad na makamtan Kundi ang malamang tama ang aking ginawa Musika ang buhay na aking tinataglay, ito rin ang dahilan kung ba't ako naglalakbay. Musika ang buhay na aking tinataglay, ito rin ang dahilan kung ba't ako naglalakbay. Musika ang buhay na aking pinataglay ito rin ang dahilan kung ba't ako naglalakbay. Halos lahat ay nagtatanong doon sa aming bayan. Sa gitna ng kanluran na aking pinagmulan, sila na lilito pat daw ako nagkaganito. Kung ano ang dahilan, ako lang ang nakakalam. Alright. Galing so partner. Much. Sobrang galing naman ni Regen. Napaka-talented ng ating mga future educators. Speaking of talented, yes. let us recognize Mr. Gian. Ayan, pwede ba ito ngayon yes, si Mr. Mr. Gian? Gian? Ayan, who won first, yeah, first place in comic English. Asan siya? Ayan. Ayan. So, Ayan. 
Congratulations, Gian! Your future educator society family is, is very, very proud of you. All right. So now, um, it's my honor to uh, introduce again our third and last speaker for today. So she is a dedicated early childhood educator with a passion for fostering young minds. She's uh, she is currently uh, serving as an early year lead or teacher, a uh, lead or head teacher at the International School of English in Okayama, Japan. So she plays a pivotal role in shaping the educational journeys of her students. She is also committed to learning herself, pursuing her master's degree in early childhood education at La Consolation University, Philippines. Her academic pursuit reflects her deep-seated interest in various educational philosophies, including pay-based, cognitive-based, and Montessori approaches. Please join us in welcoming once again our esteemed speaker for today. Live na live po, makakasama po natin si Ms. Heidi Gonzalez Obal. Um, wait lang po ma, may technical problem po yata, hindi ko po ma-present yung slide ko. A pleasant afternoon to everyone. Am I audible po? Hold on po, ma'am. Is my slide okay, ma'am? Can you see it po? Um, hold on, ma'am. I already shared it, pero hindi ko po alam ba't hindi po makita yung slide. Okay na po. Okay, ma'am. Is it okay now, ma'am, in full screen? Naka-full screen na po siya dito sa akin. Hold on, ma'am. Okay na po. I'll try to share my screen again.
full screen na po siya in Audible. Ah, okay po. Sorry about the technical problems. Okay, um, a pleasant afternoon to everyone. So once again, I'm Heidi Gonzalez Ubaldo, and I'm an early childhood educator here in Okayama, Japan. So um, I will be sharing with you in a while some of the um, strategies and best practices that we do in our school. But before I go on with that, I would like to show you a brief description of our school. So we are located in Okayama, the western side of Japan. And Okayama is known as the land of sunshine because throughout the year, Okayama is blessed with minimal rain and a mild climate. Also, Okayama is one of the safest prefectures in Japan in terms of natural disasters. And also, we don't have any nuclear plants here. Also, we are a bicycle-friendly town due to its relatively flat topography. Um, so most students, teachers, even I actually, I go to my work using my bicycle because it's flat and it's safe to cycle. And we have like bicycle lanes almost everywhere. So we go to school by bicycle, we go to work by bicycle. Even our parents actually, when, it's, when the weather is nice, they just usually go to school or work by bicycle. So those are just some fun facts about our place, which is Okayama. So on the next slide, as you can see, this is our school. This was built, um, if I'm not mistaken, eight years ago. So we had a lot of students, so we had to build another one. There's another building right next to it, which was built 24 years ago. But the demand here is among English um, schools, a preschool, um, is increasing rapidly. So we had to build another building. So this was built eight years ago or six years ago. So we call it Okayama International Preschool. In this building, we have three different classes. On the first floor, in the first floor right here, we have the baby class. And then we have two older classes up on the second floor. Okay, moving on. We have three grade levels in our school. The first one is the um, zero and the two years, which we call the hedgehog class. And you heard me right, zero to two years old. So kahit kapapanganak lang po, pwede na silang mag-enroll. But with um, more documents to be submitted, mas marami pong documentation pag mas bata yung i-enroll nila. And then the next grade level that we have is the two and the four years. So we call it the qual and the squirrel classes. The third one is the four and the six years, which we call the fox and the kangaroo classes. I'll talk more about these age groups later on. Um, as for the courses options, we have three courses in our school. The first one is the short course, which is from 9 o'clock in the morning until 1 in the afternoon. We have the long course, which is from 9 and the extended course, which is from 9 until 6 in the afternoon, sometimes 7 actually. So for the extended course, the full-time working parents. Um, kids extending until 6 or 7 are given afternoon snacks para maka survive po sila hanggang 6 or 7 before sila mag um, dinner. So going on, um, I'll be sharing with you four strategies and best practices that we do in our school. We have number one, health and nutrition. Number two, we have teaching independence through fun activities. The third one would be arts and creative literacy. And the fourth one would be school safety drills and exercises. So about health and nutrition. Um, this is our school lunches, or we call it in Japanese, kyushoku. Um, not only in our school, actually, but most schools here in Japan make um, their own school lunches. So in our school, we have our own kitchen, and we make their school lunches every single day. So these are prepared every day and served within a two-hour time frame. Um, as you may know, Japanese meals are the healthiest ones. So right here on my left, you can see the menu. It says rice, chicken, um, cabbage, vermicelli soup, plus a small banana right here um, for the baby class in the morning. And then another one right here on my right, we have some rice, egg soup, mackerel, coleslaw salad, and milk. So all Japanese lunch sets go with a cup of milk. Then after they finish their milk, they'll be given um, oolong tea or barley tea. 
they're not allowed to drink any fruit juices in the school. So it's just either water, tea, or milk. Then for the next one, in our school, we do give the parents um, their monthly lunch menu. So these monthly menu are given um, maybe two or three weeks earlier. So the, if they want to see how the, the lunch looks like or how or what are the, the ingredients used for the lunch, then yeah, they can actually go to the kitchen and ask. If they're concerned about allergy stuff, they can go to the office and ask. So for example, on the 22nd of March, which was yesterday, we had spaghetti with meat sauce. Japanese mustard, spinach, and fish sausage salad. Then we have some milk soup as well. That includes milk. Um, a total of 455 kilocalories. So we normally include the uh, calories per, per meal because this is very important among Japanese parents. They want to know how much calorie the kids intake per day. So for the afternoon snack, it's also, let's go to maybe the 19th. An example of the afternoon snack here, it says handmade. There's melon bread style toast. So most of the time, they also make the afternoon snacks. More about our school lunches. So number one, carefully planned by the school nutritionist and dietitian. So in our school, we have our own nutritionist and dietitian, and they are the ones responsible for choosing the ingredients, um, ordering the, the, the lunch ingredients, making them, serving them. So everything that has to do with um, food planning, that's for the school nutritionists and dietitians to do. Number two, um, lunches are served within a two-hour time frame after being cooked. Why after why why within a two-hour time frame? Because it's the best time for the kids to eat the food. So normally, well, in Japan, it gets really hot and humid in summer. So we don't want the food to be spoiled. So as much as possible, we have to give it within a two-hour time frame. So this is very important. The third one, um, lunches here are prepared and cooked exclusively in the school kitchen, which can only be accessed by the kitchen staff. So no other, um, no other people actually can enter the, the school kitchen, um, just the kitchen staff. So even teachers were not allowed. Um, this is to avoid contamination inside the kitchen um, premises or working place. Number four, kitchen staff are required to provide monthly urine and stool samples for sanitary purposes. So this is one more thing that um, we have to follow. This is mandatory. So they need to provide urine and stool samples every month. Number five, a monthly menu is handed to parents in advance, like um, um, I told you earlier. And then number six, students with allergy are not allowed to order the school lunch. They must bring their own lunch at school every day. Sweet drinks and desserts are not allowed. Um, kids with allergy, we don't let them order school lunch. Um, also, for example, I have a student from Indonesia right now. They are not allowed to eat pork, meat, and certain, certain things. So we ask the parents to bring his own lunch. But we need to keep reminding them not to bring sweet drinks like juices or, or desserts. Especially jellies. We don't let the kids bring jelly to prevent choking. And if they want to bring, for example, tomatoes, they need to cut the tomatoes. It has to be cut in half to avoid um, choking. So that's one more important thing that we do for those parents who need to bring the, the kids' school lunches. Okay, another thing that we do for health and nutrition in our school is um, growing fruits and vegetables. This is not only a good way of teaching science to them, but also this is a good way to encourage kids to um, touch the sand, get dirty, and, and feel, feel the soil. So to explore their hands. Most kids actually, they feel scared of touching dirty stuff, but we, we encourage them to try. So as you can see here on the first picture, they're not using any shovels. We want them to use their hands to dig, to bury the, the seedlings and then to tap it with their hands so then they could feel the sand. This is also in preparation when we, when we do our um, sand pit play. 
Then on the second picture, you can see um, the same kid actually in the first picture. So she's now harvesting her tomatoes. And then the third one, the same thing. So they plant, they harvest, and then they, they get to take them home. So another one here, um, we let the kids water their plants. They take turns. Some of them water the plants. Some of them help in um, getting rid of the, the dirt or weeds. So they take turns. So this is a good way actually of, of giving them responsibilities at an early age. The second picture, harvest time. So I think um, this is radish, Japanese radish, and this was probably in autumn season. So they, they dug the um, uh, sweet radish here. And sometimes we do cook this in the kitchen for the parents to try as well. Okay, another thing that we do is the height and the weight measurement. So we do this every month, every three week, uh, every third week of the month, rather. So we check the height and the weight, and then we write it on our yearly record. So then we can actually track. So this is a good one year record for, for each kid. So we can check if they're growing fine or a bit delayed, if there's malnutrition or obesity. So we can record everything and then we, we show it to the parents, the parents sign, they, they give comments afterwards. Also, this is a very good chance for us teachers, for us teachers to check any um, physical marks, abuse on their bodies, because we don't know what's happening at home, right? So this is a good chance for us to see um, their bodies or allergies as well, because most of the kids here in Japan, they have atopy. So we make sure that um, it's properly treated. Going on, in our school also, we have nap time. So the baby class and the second class, the two and the four, we do have nap times, but not the oldest, not the, the oldest group. Our nap time lasts for two to two and a half hours a day. They need to bring their own futon or bed. But one thing that we don't do is we don't allow them to bring pillows or use pillows during nap time. Why? Because it is, um, let's say, dangerous. So right here, the boy with um, a red towel, we call it a towel cat in Japan or a small facial towel. He really likes this one. So the parent um, asked us to let him bring it. So it's like, okay, we can, you can, you can let him take it, but blank, uh, sorry, but pillows, they're not allowed to, to lessen the risk of suffocation as well. Also, when they're taking a nap here in Japan, we need to check them every 15 minutes and we need to make sure they're not sleeping on their backs. However, on this picture, there's this boy um, sleeping on his back. And if I'm not mistaken, another boy right here. So if we see kids sleeping on their backs, we need to turn it the other way around. They have to sleep, sorry, on their stomachs. We have to move them and they have to sleep on their backs, not on their stomachs. Then we need to check them every 15 minutes, check their breathing, check if there's no suffocation, um, no nose bleeding, because in summer it gets really hot, as I said, and some kids, um, their nose tend to bleed when it's too hot or when we're using the heater in, in winter. So we have to keep an eye on each kid. Every 15 minutes, we have to check them. And right here on the other side, you can see um, this is our daily record. We record here. So we have nap time record. We need to check every 15 minutes. We need to put a tick right here. And also on this corner right here, you can see temperature. So for example, the name Ria Akiyama, her temperature was taken at 7.40 in the morning and the temperature was 36.6. The parents need to do this every single morning before the kid comes to school. They need to let us know what the temperature was for that day and then what time it was taken. Also, if they, ha if they have any comments, like um, the kid had a fever the night before, or um, we had to go to the doctor later on, so they need to let us know. We have to write it on the parent parents' comment section. And the last corner here, we have the teacher's comment. If we have anything to tell the parents about the kids for that day, we have to write it down. Make sure to tell the parents about it. So that's about it, about nap time.
Okay, so that's about health and nutrition, about school, our school. So the next one would be practices for teaching independence through fun activities, especially life skills. So once in a while, we do have baking activity. Sometimes, actually, very seldom we do cooking activity. It's quite difficult to do it. A baking activity, we do it, say, twice a year. So in this picture, it was in my classroom, and we did a simple cutting activity right here. So as you can see, this is to help them with their life skills, how to cut, how to use a knife with, with safety measures. So we could help the kids actually learn um, through this simple activity. So they don't feel that they're learning because it's fun for them. So like cutting and then using a cookie, uh, cookie cutter, we made some gingerbread cookie in, in, I think, winter. Yeah, around winter here, December. So this is another fun activity for them to, to learn. At the same time, enjoy what they're doing. Then another one that we do, we encourage our kids to eat on their own with very minimal help from the parents, sorry, from the teachers. So this is our baby class. As you can see, um, there are actually six students here, age zero to two. So probably the youngest here is one and a half, and the oldest one would be two. And the ratio of students and teachers here would be two is to one. Two students per teacher. So the Japanese um, uh, city hall, actually, not sorry, the city hall is very strict with regards to the ratio of, of the kids and the teachers in the baby class. So there should be enough Japanese teachers in the baby class. Um, on my right, these are my students, age two to four. So as you can see, they're eating on their own. They're using chopsticks. And this boy, as I mentioned to you earlier, this is my Indonesian student. He just joined about three or four months ago. So he's still um, not so used to the class routine. He's still very aloof. Um, he's still transitioning. So that's okay. Um, he needs time, really. So yeah, so everyone's eating their lunch with very minimal help from the teachers. Uh, okay, let's go on to the next slide. Water and bubble play. So this is a very fun activity that we do every year during summer. This is not only a fun activity, but this also help. Um, this also helps the kids um, to interact with with one another. Another good thing about this activity is that after we do the water and the bubble play, they get to clean up on their own. So they clean up all the things that they used. Also, we wash the clothes and we ask the parents to train the kids at home on how to wring out how to um, roll their shirt, um, put it in their towel, put it in their swimming bag. So this is a good way for them to be trained at an early age. So these are two and four year olds, by the way. So yeah, that's a good thing about this, this water play. It's a bit time consuming, which is normal for this age group, but this helps them a lot to, to practice their life skills. So this helps with their fine motor skills, um, good for training, and yeah, parents are very happy actually whenever we do the water and bubble play. Next one that we do, we have short walk trips. So whenever we go outside and do some um, short walk trips, if it's in the beginning of the term, we still use these um, training ropes for them to hold on to because this guides them actually to be in one place. So some of them would go this way, some of them would go that way. So it's kind of hard to really let them walk on the side road without the rope. But then after a few months, they get used to walking. So we don't use the, the training ropes anymore. And then they could go without it actually. So this picture on my left, I think we went to a nearby shrine and then we picked up some acorns and pine cones for their collaborative work. And as you can see here, they're, they're bringing on their, they're, they're taking their own backpacks. It's quite heavy, but they can do it. They have to be trained to walk, to carry their own backpacks. Because when they go to the elementary or primary school here, they have to walk in a group, as maybe you've seen on Facebook. So they have to walk on their own. So this is a very good practice for them. And on my right, 
if I'm not mistaken, we went to the post office nearby, which is probably a five or 10 minute walk from our school. So we let them made or made a postcard for their grandparents. It is, it's for, um, it's a celebration for grandparents day. So they drew something on it and then the, I, uh, we let them uh, dropped the postcards in the, in the box right here. Next one, we also do some uh, exploration actually around the neighborhood. So this was inside the post office. This is the manager in the post office. And he had a short talk about how, how cards are delivered, although they don't understand most of the things that he said. But it's an experience still for them to see a new place and get to interact with him. And on my right, right here, we went to um, a nearby temple to watch the cherry blossoms. These are, I think, three and four year olds. So they don't bring their bags anymore. Instead, they have their water bottles, tea bottles with them. Also, when it's raining, um, we do have some indoor activities like this one. Or when the weather is good, we go for some outdoor activities. So we always have these short walks, actually. Um, as you can see here, they walk with their partners. We always have this white line, actually, and they have to know where to walk. And whenever we cross the street or the road, they do know their routine. They have to look to the left, to the right, put their hand up, walk with their hands up. And that's because most of the kids are small. Children are small, and some trucks here don't get to see them when they cross. So they, they, they're trained to put their hands up whenever they cross the road. Okay, so that's about it. The third one would be about arts and creative literacy. So this is one of the collaborative works that we did. So they drew something on the ground. They, they just explore their hands and their feet, actually. And another good way, actually, for them to socialize and interact with one another. And in here, as I mentioned to you, we collected some acorns and pine cones. And we did a collaborative work right here. Another one that we do, uh, yeah, so computer literacy. So they get to use um, a laptop from the school. So each student gets a laptop. They practice this computer for a good 10, 15 minutes tops. We don't let them use the, the computer for a long time. It's just, just for um, computer-based activities. Then we also have some painting activity. As you may notice, we, this is just an improvised easel. So we don't need to buy it. In Japan, we, we try to recycle as much as we can. So these are just made from used cardboards and we just made it into an easel for the, for the kids to use whenever they paint. So they're wearing their smocks just in case they get dirty. Um, yeah. Okay, so another one, another fun activity for them to do is finger painting, actually, and sandpit play. So finger painting, as I told you, they have to wear a smock because it can really make their uniforms dirty. So as you can see here, they're using their hands, they explore. It gets really, really messy. But that's part of the, the arts and the play here in, in preschool. So we let them enjoy, we let them explore and be creative. Also, we have a small sandpit um, box in our school. And in summer, we do have like a small activity or a short play in here. We use the holes, we use the water, they dig, they make a dinosaur swamp. We, we play in the sandpit. So some kids actually, they don't want to walk barefoot they find it scary or parang mm, nakakadiri maglakad so now we encourage them to use their hands use your feet you have to feel so this is a very good way for them to to explore and yeah feel feel the sand then later on after a few times that they use the sand pit they get used to it and they enjoy it so it's just a routine it's a process repetition then they're fine after a few times. And last, I, I would be talking to you about school safety drills and exercises that we do in our school. Um, okay, so this is about earthquake drill and fire drill. Like I mentioned to you earlier, we don't have that 
um, many earthquakes here in Japan, but we still do the earthquake drill, of course, just in case it happens. So here we have the simulator truck. Um, the truck comes maybe twice a year for us to, to practice, actually. So the parents, sorry, not the parents, but the teachers and the students get to ride on it, and then we can actually feel the intensity of the earthquake. So this gives um, an actual experience for the kids to know like how, how strong earthquakes or how, how dangerous it is when earthquake um, strikes. Another thing that we do is um, the fire drill. So as you can see here, there's the Okayama Fire Department fire truck. So they would visit us, um, I think, twice a year as well. So they would show us the truck, give a little, um, little talk to the kids. And they normally open this truck and then show what's inside, how the water comes out from the hose. They even show their suit. So yeah, so we do earthquake drill and fire drill in our school. And this one, it's called intruder drill. So in Japan, we don't have, uh, we don't have guards. We only have, so we have the, the gate locked all the time. When the parents come, they would ring the bell. It opens and then it, it closes again, it locks again. We don't have any guards here. So that's why we need to keep practicing the intruder drill just in case, you know, intruder comes in or strangers come in, then at least the parent, the, the, the teachers and the kids and the staff know what to do if they, um, in case it happens. So in this picture, as you can see, they're holding a metal to keep away the strangers. But if we don't have this, in our, in our school, we don't have this um, metal stick, but we use the um, fire extinguisher instead of this one. So we need to, get, to keep at least a meter away from the, the intruder. Um, and then we let the kids, normally we would take the kids inside the classroom and we lock all the doors. Then we will pretend to call the um, emergency hotline, which is 119, and then we, we will report everything, what happened, um, the time the incident happened, and then yeah, they, they'll, they'll come. So normally we do this three times in a year. So we call it the intruder drill. Okay, probably is the last, um, the last slide. We call it the road safety exercises. So the first picture here, so I, I mentioned to you earlier that whenever we cross the roads, the kids need to put their hands up, look to the left, look to the right before they cross the road. So this is what we do um, whenever we have the road safety exercises. So this lady actually from the Okayama City office, so she would... She came to our school and then she talked about um, how to, to cross the road safely. And then we let the kids cross by practicing how to, to um, cross the road safely. Then on the second picture, the same thing. So they were talking about safety rules whenever they cross the road, how to avoid, um, uh, say, accidents. So yeah, that's on the second picture. And then Third picture, as you can see, there's a big truck right here. Um, and we, we had to make sure that kids understand why they're raising their hands up whenever they cross the road. So we need to make them understand that trucks are high, drivers cannot see them. So whenever they cross the road, they have to put their hands up before they cross. So that's what we normally tell them whenever we do their road safety exercises. Yeah, so that's about my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Obaldo, live na live, live na live. Mga students na meron silang iba't ibang way para matuto ng mga bata pa lang alam na nila na um, yung sa drills, di ba? Mga maliliit pa lang. Mga yes, na even sa, sa computer, di ba? Mga 2 to 3 years old, imagine sanay na, na sila mag-gumamit mag, ano, mag ng internet. Okay, so for now, we are uh, 
going or let our audience naman to share their takeaways take away. or insight for today's Lala, seminar. Lapit so, lapit tayo sa ating mga um, so, participants mga for ulit. today. Ayaw Ayan. na na sa akin. Ayaw na na tumingin sa'yo, Pili partner. Pili tayo. Uh, kaya mo from? First year. First year. Ito, so, ano kaya ang natutunan Tumingin. niya for today's uh, seminar? Yes, Miss Misty. Um, hello po. Good afternoon to everyone. And first of all po, uh, I would like to uh, say thank you and to commend all our uh, guest speakers because uh, honestly, it is really a big help for us, especially EC students, future educators po. And I know naman po na for everyone, it is a good catch po. Then, ayun, uh, for me po, ang pinaka-highlight po, ang natutunan ko po is as a teacher. We're not only a teacher inside the school po. Uh, we should be uh, diverse and inside the classroom po, we should be inclusive, especially po. Um, also, thank you po sa pag uh, bigay sa amin ng opportunity to dive in in different school setups po internationally. So, ayun po, ang natutunan ko rin po is as a teacher, um, we should be not a guide, a, a sage on the stage, uh, especially we should uh, be a guide on the side. Uh, and also, uh, for the students to learn, um, we should let, let them engage uh, within their environment. And we're not, uh, hindi lang po tayo yung mag-help sa kanila na matuto within this 21st century, uh, especially po different challenges po yung ma-encounter nila. Of course, for the whole community, the teachers and the environment and everyone within the unison po, um, Pwede matutulungan natin sila, hindi lang po tayo mag -isa. So, uh, lastly po, um, it is really important po na mabuild po natin yung healthy well-being nila. So, that's all. Ang dami niya natutunan, partner. Diyan ba? Sa side Meron na yan. Meron akong pambata dito from okay. second year naman. Easy event. Wow. Tawag natin si Miss Liana Roma. Well, good afternoon po. I'm Liana. I'm also a second year ECE student. So, I, I would also like to thank uh, the guest speakers po. And sobrang dami ko pong natutunan. And uh, first of all, um, through the discussions, na, uh, nagpapasalamat po ako na pinakita niyo po sa amin yung different uh, international settings po na pwede naming mapagkuhanan ng different experiences. For example po, Sa Japan po, uh, nagpo-focus po sila sa independence ng students. For Philippines, uh, more on nutrition. And para naman po sa New Zealand is focusing on play-based learning. Um, and napakadami pong pros and cons ng pagpunta sa ibang bansa. Pero ang natutunan ko po talaga ay kailangan ko na pong i-ready yung passport ko. And it really opened my eyes po <laughs> kung gaano karaming... Siyempre po, para mag-widen yung uh, horizons natin, kaya po yung ready ko yung passport. And uh, I really opened my eyes kung gano'n po ka-importante at different ways kung paano tuturuan nyo ng life skills, motor skills ng students. And to let children be children po. Yun po yung main highlight na natutunan ko. Uh, let them uh, get dirty, uh, hayaan po silang maglaro because through that, they learn. And... We have to also remember that uh, we are teaching children, so it's their first time po, uh, learning. So we have to have these, uh, the patience, the routines. We have to have uh, all these things to make sure that uh, the children are learning. Uh, 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 teaching them about the right, uh, rights and wrongs, the do's and don'ts. Uh, we have to be patient with these things kasi po, uh, bagong mulat nga lang po sila dito sa mundo. Hindi po nila basta-basta alam yung mga bagay na to. And also, uh, we, uh, de, kumbaga, they're like sponges po. And we have to take advantage of that. Kasi po, uh, kailangan buhos lang po tayo ng buhos sa kanila ng pagmamahal, ng uh, mga knowledge. Well, hindi spoon feeding, pero uh, we have to provide them with the stage that they need. Uh, uh, mag, uh, kumbaga po, magsaset tayo ng mga 
challenges ng mga knowledge para po nasaset po sila for the brighter future. Wow. At very Ganda well done, Teacher Van. So, kagaya ni Liana, tayo nakaredy na yes. ang alin, ang passport. Alright. Ngayon naman, partner, hindi naman tayo ng kanyang takeaways mula sa, hindi naman siya ECE. Ngayon naman, ay punta naman tayo sa another, uh, other majors. Sa English major naman tayo. So, uh, let me call on Mr. Gian Genesis. Zaluet. Okay, so, uh, uh, first of all, thank you sa mga uh, presenters. Uh, please, uh, let us clap our hands para sa kanila. Since, um, okay yung ano presentation. So, um, nasabi na nila lahat eh, nung dalawa, ang haba ng mga sagot nila. But, yeah, I will just conclude all of those realizations na us teachers have a responsibility to teach our students uh, the context of the academics. Kung ano yung content ng books, but our responsibilities doesn't end here. We should also guide them uh, to hone and improve their character and also uh, promote a safe avenue where they can learn. So, uh, ayun, it, because uh, we are in the 21st century learning field, uh, medyo diverse na yung uh, learning needs ng mga students. So, it is a challenge for teachers na also to devise teaching approaches na magsasatisfy and magsasafest dun sa mga learning needs nila. Since if we cannot devise and we cannot uh, uh, utilize a teaching approach na magsasatisfy dun sa diverse le uh, learning needs, uh, parang hindi rin natin uh, ma-achieve ma yung goal natin na magkaroon ng holistic learning within the classroom. So parang it's a big challenge for us na magkaroon ng isang uh, teaching approach, be innovative, be creative when it comes to the teaching approaches that we're going to use in the classroom so that we can um, satisfy or uh, we can surface a lot of issues and a lot of uh, things that is needed to be addressed in the classroom scenario. In lang. All Thank right. you so much. A uh, partner, meron pa yata ng isa pa. Ay, last pa. na, si last Liyan, na. Mo. Okay, so ito hindi rin siya easy major, pero marami daw siyang natutunan sa so, uh, for today's seminar. Okay, so uh, let me call on Miss Nicole Villanueva from third year English major. Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Once again, thank you for our guest speakers for this afternoon. Truly, we learned a lot. But for me, um, based on those presentations about their best practices to their um, respective school, the denominator of my takeaways is that they're all inclined to the 21st century education. We're in their focus on the practical skills of the students. You know, na kung saan ma-apply talaga nila yung... Um, they're giving emphasis on the skills, diba, rather than on the knowledge itself. Kasi... With that, mas na-apply ng mga students yung knowledge nila in real-world applications, and which is the main focus of, again, the 21st century education. And again, as a future educator, I guess, this is something that we should adopt as future teachers because the world is changing, right? So thus, our strategies and approaches, we need to innovate um, approaches and strategies that will cater our learners, need, especially in this ever-changing world. And always remember that once a teacher always a learner. So we need to fle be flexible and equip our learners with a flexible foundation that will help them to have an unbreakable um, skills in the future. So thank you. All right. Once again, let us show some love. Grabe naman. And gratitude. Yes. Partner, meron pa yata tayong time. Baka meron pang gustong magbigay ng kanyang takeaways for today's seminar. Meron pa po ba? From our alternative education po. Naman. Baka po meron po, baka gusto niyo pong mag-share ng inyong takeaways for today's seminar. <laughs> Wag po kayong mag-unahan. <laughs> baka meron po isa sa inyo na pwede pong mag-share ng kanyang takeaways for today's seminar. Representative daw po. <laughs> Wala na tayo ng panahon ng Ang hilig niyo pa magturo. Marie Jose. Pero ang gaganda ng mga sinabi nila, yung huli nga, yung huling ano, medyo para sa si Flash. Ang bilis niya magsalita. Maganda yung hourly rate. Okay yun. Ang galing. Pero ako sa akin, siguro sa amin, uh, isa-summarize namin sa uh, mga dalawa lang. 
First, you must love teaching. And second, you must love children. Kahit ano pang natapos yun, ang dami niyan. Kurso, may PhD kayo, wala yan. Kung hindi niyo mahal ang pagtuturo, huwag na kayo mag-teacher. Kung mahal niyo ang pagtuturo, kung hindi kayo maiinlove sa mga estudyante niyo, mamahalin niyo sila, huwag na kayo magtuloy. Yun lang. Ayun, walang maiinlove sa estudyante. Akin, ang sa akin, kanina nga tinatanong nila, sino ba gusto mag-abroad? Parang ayos sumagot. Because, why? Because you, you will be labeled unpatriotic. di ba? Pero sa totoo lang, masarap mag-abroad. Isipin mo dito sa Pilipinas, pagtagulan ang kalaban mo, baha. Pagtag-araw ang kalaban mo, araw. Maraming inihimatay na isadyante. Mga ganon. Pero kailangan nating mahalin yung pagtuturo eh. Kung gusto niyo maging teacher. Kailangan maging yung resourceful, flexible, sabi nga nila. Yun ang sa akin. Yung mother ko kasi, she, she was ah, hindi, nagtataka kayo bakit. Diba? Sa government ako, I'm a retired for 30 years. Bakit ako nagtuturo? Sinabi yan ng mother ko. Nasabi sa akin, alam mo, magiging magaling kang teacher katulad ko. She was a retired teacher sa Houston, uh, Humble City. Magaling. At saka hindi lang children yung hawak niya. Isped. Yung may mga ano, may mga kapansanan. Dito nga sa atin, parang wala yun eh. Kaya kailangan mahal niyo ang pagtuturo. Kasi hindi, hindi kayo mag, magsasaksid pag di niyo minahal ang pagtuturo. Kung pera lang ang gusto niyo, maraming ibang kurso na magkakapera kayo. Kasi sa teacher, sikat nga kayo, pero ang baba ng sahod. Yan ang totoo. We have to accept the hard realities of life. Yun lang and thank you. All right. So, once again, let us show so some much, love bro. and gratitude for the time and effort of our speakers. And on behalf of the Future Educator Society, let me read to you the Certificate of Appreciation. Certificate of Appreciation. Of, uh, this certificate is proudly presented to Ms. Heidi Gonzalez, Ms. Michelle Ann Payongayong, and Ms. Irene as well for her significant uh, contribution as a, as a resource speaker at the seminar team Building Safe and Inclusive Communities, Strategies, and Best Practices. Hosted by the Future Educator Society, given on the 23rd day of March in the year of our Lord. Signed by our Dean, uh, Dr. Olivia P. Almario, our moderators, Mr. Uh, Jeremy Ponsalan, and Ms. Nicole Joy Balhadi. And we will be I request our, our moderators, Dean, stage. and our speakers for our photo opportunity. Okay, so there is another certificate from the graduate studies. So, certificate of appreciation presented by Ms. He uh, Heidi, Irene Azul, and Ms. Uh, Michelle Ann Payungayong for her generously uh, sharing her time, expertise, and knowledge as a resource speaker in the context of a seminar titled Building Safe and Inclusive School Communities, Strategies, and Best Practices. Given this 23rd day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024, at the Bed AVRMR Building, uh, La Consolacion University, Philippines, City of Malolos, Bulacan. Signed by uh, our Dean Olivia P. Almario and Vice President uh, for Graduate Studies, uh, Dr. Enrico F. Rosan. Thank you so much, Po. Thank you, Po. I'm picture, picture, Po. Smile. Stand and pose. Ayan. Oh. Once again, thank you. Thank you so much po sa lahat po na ating resource speakers for today. 
Okay, to give us the closing remarks, po, may we call on uh, Ms. Rika Mayte, best the president of Future Educator Society. All right. So, thank you po again sa ating mga resource speakers. On behalf of the Future Educator Society, I would like to thank the people behind this successful event. Dr. Olivia P. Almario for uh, support and making this event possible. Uh, for uh, Thank you for our dear uh, speakers. And for the press officers, sa mga rush na gawain, no? thank you for your efforts. And sa participants natin from Alternative Education, uh, we appreciate you for being with us here today. And of course, the presence of our future, uh, future educators. So thank you all. Sorry, sorry mo. Future Educator Society, thank you for being uh, with us today. And I'm looking forward for many successful event like yes. this. Thank you so much, everyone. All right. Thank you so much, Ms. Rika May Tebes, the president of the Future Educator Society. With that, thank you so much for participating in our second seminar. It is a great gratitude that we reflect on the wealth of knowledge and inspiration we have received today. As we leave this seminar, let us carry with us the passion and commitment to make our school truly safe and inclusive spaces for all students. Let us remember that every action we take, no matter how small, can make a difference in the lives of our students. On behalf of Future Educator Society, we would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to our speakers, sponsors, and attendees for making these seminars our sounding success. Let us continue to strive for excellence in education, knowing that together we can create a brighter future for all. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, so um, we'll be uh, you'll be receiving the certificate of participation po ngayon for those na naka-attend po. So, uh, certificate of participation is herbly presented to for actively participating in the conduct of seminar titled Building Safe and Inclusive School Communities, Strategies and Best Practices. Given this 23rd day of March in the year of the Lord, 2024, at the Bed AVR MR Building, La Consolacion University, Philippines, City of Malolos. So it is signed by the Dean of College of Arts, Sciences of Education and Education, Ms. Olivia P. Almario, and of course, the Vice President for Graduate Studies, uh, Mr. Enrico F. Rosales. All right. Ibibigay na lang yun ang mga president ng klase niyo. Pakiantay na lang. Okay. So uh, moving forward, we may call on Ms. Jasmine Horonimo, First year representative of Future Educator Society to lead us in our closing prayer. Ms. Jasmine, let us all stand for our closing prayer. So let's bow our head and feel the presence of our Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of this seminar, we are filled with gratitude for the knowledge shared by the speakers and the dedication of the Future Educator Society in organizing this event. We thank you for gathering us here today and guiding us throughout the seminar. Grant us the wisdom to apply what we have learned to our own journey of growth and discovery. May we be inspired to be lifelong learners and compassionate educators. Guide us as we live here and bless each participant with strength of purpose and the desire to make a positive difference. In your holy name, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Thank you again, everyone. So, meron po tayong evaluation form. May we, may request, may we request everyone to fill out? Okay po. Wait lang po. Okay, so ngayon naman po ay bago po tayo umalis sa uh, building po na ito, magkawin po muna tayo ng photo option. Opo. So dito na lang po tayo. Dito na lang kami. Dito na lang. Okay, let us all stand and pose. <laughs> One, two, three, smile. Sa pa po. One, two, three, smile. Okay. 
Again, thank you so much. Thank everyone, you so much, po. Thank you so much, ma'am. Again, I am Rika Mita Best. And I am Jenny Vigirido. Your MC for today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.